Hey guys, so the day is here. We are at the end of the seven day challenge that I challenged you to partake in seven days ago when I released this video. I have spent the last seven days partaking in the challenge that I asked you guys to participate in and I'm here to share my experience of the challenge, what I learned, how it was for me, what I found hard, what I got out of it. And as I encourage you to do in the video that I released seven days ago, I would love to hear how the challenge went for you guys. I was so happy to see that the video landed with you guys and that some of you decided to do the challenge for yourself. I did read all of your comments and I thought it was so cool that you guys were motivated by what I said in the video. As I mentioned, I'm an extrovert, so I like to partake in things with other people when I'm doing things with people and I know that they're part participating as well. It incentivizes me to continue with the self-discipline and the challenge. For context, if you don't know what I'm talking about, seven days ago, I released a video where I talked about the concerns that I had with the concept of binge watching, the potential dangers of binge watching. And I asked you guys to choose three of 20 options of little changes that you could make to your life over the next seven days that would hopefully encourage you to escape or start to claw your way out of the binge watching hole. Not all of these changes had to do with with binge watching in and of itself. Some of them were just lifestyle changes, health changes. I personally chose to do numbers one, two, three, six, seven, eight, 10, 14, 16, and 19. I stuck to all of those. I did slip up a couple of times. I'll go into it. I mean, I am human. But overall, it was an incredibly positive experience. I learned a lot about myself, about life, about my body, about my mind. And I definitely think that I'm going to be taking some of these challenges and continuing with these changes that I made in my life because I just feel genuinely happier, healthier, and more in touch with reality in the world around me. I asked you guys in the video to prepare and journal and document how the challenge went for you. So ultimately I'm making this video not only to share my experience, but to encourage you guys to type your experience and what you learned in the comments below so that we can have some kind of conversation about it. So I'm gonna speak now about some of the changes I noticed in my life and some things that I really appreciated about this challenge. Speaking about the general changes that I noticed first and then going a little bit more into specifics. The first thing that I noticed noticed in general was that my mind quieted down. When I was routinely consuming content, not just the true crime podcast that I talked about in my previous video, but social commentaries, podcasts, some of which talked about really important issues, but it was the level at which I was consuming the content that was problematic. It's really good to have food for thought to get you thinking about important deep issues in the world, but I found that I was consuming way too much of it. As a result, my mind was noisy all of the time. I was thinking about social issues issues and the darkness of the world. And I was so used to clicking buttons on my phone and getting information immediately fed into my brain that my intention span was also shorter. So I was noticing that I wasn't able to focus on one particular thought for very long. My mind was catastrophizing a lot of the thoughts that I was having. So generally speaking, my mind was more cloudy, which is a natural consequence of feeding your brain with a thousand different things every single day. The first day, it was like I had some real withdrawals. I found myself going to click on podcasts or YouTube videos and I had to actively tell myself. In fact, even sometimes I clicked on them and then I only realized, oh no, I meant to be doing the challenge because I was just in autopilot. So I had like withdrawals for the first two days, but after I got used to that initial change, it became a lot easier and I was really able to strip myself of those attachments more effectively. And I've done a no internet challenge on my Instagram once, but I just did it for 24 hours. I challenged my followers to go without the internet for an entire day. But this challenge made me realize that you really need more days in a challenge to really actually detach from the thing because that first day you're really just going through withdrawals. I feel like 24 hours isn't an even, even enough time to appreciate the changes that it implements in your life over time. So as a result of my mind quieting down, my attention span increased in general, the brain fog disappeared, I had more clarity. I noticed that after the first few days of doing life without YouTube and streaming, my world actually broadened. It wasn't just YouTube, 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 Netflix, Netflix, Netflix anymore. I feel like, you know, when we're watching content, we think that we are opening our minds and hearing from other people and that that broadens our perspectives and our worlds. But I think ironically, our world is quite narrow. The things that we are missing in the day to day, in the people in our lives, in opportunities to talk to strangers, in opportunities to appreciate the beauty around us. Therefore, our world isn't actually expanding. It really is quite narrow. Now, I'm aware I'm talking like an SE Dom right now. So obviously with my particular functions, I do get a certain level of enjoyment, energy, fulfillment from interacting in my sensory world. I acknowledge that. For a lot of you, you might actually feel like your world is expanding by inhaling content all the time. I just wanna say as well, 
to make it really clear, I think that we each have a different threshold for how much content is too much content. I'm not saying that a certain amount of episodes or a certain amount of videos per week is bad for every single person. We all have different levels of content that we can take before we get to the point where it's really disrupting our life and contributing in a negative way to our mental state and our health. Bottom line is, I think that if you are in control of it, it's fine. But if it is controlling you, that's when you kind of need to take a step back, I think. And I was certainly at that point. Another result of my mind being quieter was that I was just kinder because I had more time for people. And I think some of the particular challenges that I took on personally myself out of the 20 that I gave you facilitated that, but I'll go into that in a second. And of course, as a result of my mind being less cluttered, I was able to introspect more because my mind wasn't so cluttered with all of the things that I was hearing in pods and videos. It was more focused on the things that I actually care about. So self-improvement, introspection, self-awareness, especially as I'm preparing to get married. I think it's so important to devote time to that kind of stuff. So overall, very positive effects of the challenge. So to go into more specifics, one of the promises that I made to myself was to cut out all streaming. Now, to be completely candid with you, I did not keep this rule completely. I did still watch Friends when I was with my fiance because we have been spending some downtime amidst all the wedding planning, watching sitcoms. It helps us to unwind, relax, and kind of just be. It gets us out of our head in a way. So I did still watch some episodes of Friends with my fiance. I did not watch it alone though. And I did not stream Netflix at all while I was alone this week. And then I did stream some podcasts and a couple of videos in the first few days when I was going on my walks, which at the beginning I could justify because I was like, I'm walking, I want something to listen to. But then I was like, you know what, Kristen, you're taking this challenge on, why not go hardcore? So I did a few quiet walks, which was really Really cool. And then in the last few days, I've been listening to music, which is how I used to do it and how I really love to do it because music actually helps me be present in the moment. Whereas podcast people talking, they can really contribute to my mood declining in that I'm thinking about concepts that have a tendency, if I have too much intake of them, to make me catastrophize in my brain. So music and quiet walks in the last five or so days is how I've been doing it. But at the beginning, I did some streaming while I was walking. So the really positive upside of cutting out streaming was that it felt like honestly I had been given the gift of time. It's so amazing how I thought that I did not have that much time. Like I've been so stressed over the last few years recently about how little time I have. But when I cut out streaming, I realized I actually have so much time, you know, because you sit down in front of your computer for the day and you see a video, you quickly watch it before you begin your tasks or during your lunch break, you might switch on a video and then suddenly it goes an hour and you have done nothing except watch the video. But I did not have the option in my brain to watch any videos. So suddenly I was like sitting at my desk and I was like, well, I've got to do work or I've got to reply to emails or I've got to do wedding planning stuff or I've got to respond to comments or whatever it is that I needed to do because I have no other option. <laughs> and then I finished my task so much faster because even just knowing that streaming wasn't an option made me just tunnel focus on the things that I had to do. Cause it's not like I was thinking, oh, you know, those videos that I could watch, YouTube is just there and I can click on the videos if I really want to. It's like, no, YouTube is not an option for me today. Instagram, Netflix, none of that is an option for me today. So I have no other choice but to actually do my tasks. And I was so amazed at how just a shift in mentality. I was like, no one's holding a gun to my head and making me do this. No one's forcing me to do this. It's literally just a shift in my mentality and it's making such a difference to my state of health, mentally, physically, how much work I get done. So powerful. So having been given the gift of time, there were so many little opportunities that I would not have noticed before that I noticed this time. For instance, in the past, sometimes I would pass up an opportunity to go talk to my housemates in the morning because there was something I wanted to listen to or watch. But now it was like, oh, I can actually go and make a thing of breakfast and ask the housemates how they're going. I found myself quite bored in the first few days, to be honest. And I was like, oh, well, let me go ask my housemates how they're doing today. And that ended up in some really nice bonding, fruitful conversations with them. And sometimes they needed someone to talk to us. So it was great that I came out of my room and decided to socialize. And that over a number of days really contributed to my state of happiness, I found. Because, you know, I definitely believe that we are relational beings and we get life, love, happiness flourishing by being others focused, not self focused, aside from like self improvement. But, you know, there's a certain point at which that becomes excessive to like think about the self. And there were multiple times, like I could say at least five different times, where I was able to be there for someone in my life over the last seven days in a way that I would not have been if I had had streaming accessible to me. There were a few times where I had like a meta moment where I was like in a conversation with someone and suddenly, I'd have this thought like, oh, I should go home and do this work or there's this video I wanted to watch, but oh, hang on. 
this week I'm actually meant to be being present and trying really hard to not stream and to live a healthier life. So let me choose to sit a bit longer with this friend. Let me choose to ask more specific questions that, yeah, might require a long answer, but I have the time to listen to that friend today. And that resulted in some really beautiful, fruitful conversations. Another thing was that, as I said, I was suddenly bored, so I did little things to treat myself. I've had the time to do a hair mask. I've had the time to paint my nails. These are things that I previously never thought I had enough time to do and I couldn't justify doing because there was always tasks that I needed to do. But given that my mentality has changed to be more present focused and to spend less time online and on videos, it's like, you know what? That is an excellent use of time. And I found that, you know, painting my nails, it was so soothing and it was so therapeutic and relaxing. And, you know, I think it can get to a point sometimes where self-care can be a little bit too much. But I think it's fantastic as humans to have a balance of the things in our lives. And it was so nice this week to just experiment with the balance between work and doing those little things for myself that made me feel relaxed, such as painting my nails. Another benefit of no streaming this week was that I was not in a rush to get anywhere. Again, it's not that I ever thought like, oh, I need to go home and watch this video, but it just showed to me that when I was streaming, it was so many hours of my week. It builds up, right? It sneakily builds up the hours that you're spending doing binge watching or just watching videos here and there. And those are multiple hours of your week that you're not able to do the things like tasks, work or whatever. So you're just more, you're just more stressed. You just feel like time is so short. But as a result of cutting those things out of my life this week, I got all those hours back and it just affected my mentality. I was like, no, I've actually done my tasks for the day. I'm not in a rush to get anywhere right now. And as a result, I remember there was one time I went to coffee with my friend and I just was able to stay and chat with her for four hours. We were outdoors. I was noticing little things around me. I was noticing cute moments with families. I was more smiley to the waitress. I was able to listen more to what my friend was saying because I knew subconsciously that looking at my phone wasn't an option. Another thing in conjunction with having been given all of this time, no streaming, and also a few other things I'm gonna get into about how I just generally felt healthier. I I got so many tasks done. I got more cleaning done, more than I usually do. I did this whole task that in my head I had amplified to be this big, massive, giant task that was going to eventually have to happen. That was gonna take so much time and energy and I was subconsciously dreading it, consciously dreading it actually. And that was in preparing to move house after I get married, I need to go through all of my stuff and cull a whole bunch of stuff that I own. I had to go through the garage and decide what I was gonna cull from there. Basically just minimal my belongings. That was a huge task in my brain that I was only gonna probably do much later down the track. But I did it all yesterday because I had this time and I felt so good about myself. I respected myself so much more that I was able to do it. I was like, there's no reason why I can't do it. Why don't I just choose to do it today? And so I got up and I did it and I enjoyed it. I felt really good about myself. I wanted to give myself a high five and I was just more energized throughout the day after that. I also got more work done after I did the clean out. I then was like, wow, I wonder what other annoying tasks that I've been putting off I can do today. And so I did a bunch of wedding planning tasks that I'd been putting off, procrastinating a little bit because I just felt like it had been my own brain, my own mental blocks, my own self doing that had stopped me from doing those important tasks. So I was like, I'm just gonna choose to do them. And I did, and I got them done and it was fantastic. I also happened to release this task at a very good time in Australia because I had no idea about this because all the days blur for me being a content creator, but there was actually a public holiday in Australia during the last seven days. And so my fiance and I on the public holiday went on this road trip down the coast and I was able to just be completely present with him because again, looking at my phone wasn't an option. I chose not to take pictures and I wasn't in a rush to get home because I didn't have this like perpetual backlog of tasks that I had to do because I'd knocked out my tasks for the week. I also wasn't in a rush to get home because it's not like I was like, oh, I want to watch that TV show. So the next challenge that I took for myself throughout the week was doing five minutes of reflection every morning and every night. I did this in conjunction with reading a book every night before I go to sleep as opposed to scrolling my phone. So there were some nights I counted the five minutes of reflection as reading a book before bed. So I would read for the reflection, which worked because the books that I've been reading are The Imitation of Mary and By Love Refined. As I mentioned before, I am preparing for marriage at the moment. So this was given to me by my priest and this was recommended to me by a friend who recently got married. It is fantastic. High recommend from me if you are in a relationship of any description, really. This is not sponsored, but I will put a link to it in the description and no, it will not be an affiliate link. So I found that starting with five minutes of reflection every single day, which for me was often prayer, 
or doing some of the reading. A few times I actually found myself extending it to 10 or 15 or 20 minutes. Reflection and prayer is something that I tell myself I do every single day, but the amount of times that I wake up in the morning and I've, you know, I'm running late, I've slept in and I need to jump out of bed and start the day. It just means that I've actually skipped a lot of days of doing early morning prayer and reflection. But this challenge and telling myself, no, I made a promise to myself, I'm going to stick to it, meant that not only was I waking up on my first alarm, I was choosing immediately to sit up, pick up the books next to my bed, open a page, read a page or two, and then reflect on it. And I just found that starting the day with reflection and prayer and reading of such wholesome material honestly just put my mind into the correct framing for the day. When you're reading first thing in the morning about transcendental things, about goodness, about beauty, about purity of heart, about virtue, about love. These things put your mind in a very good place in the beginning of the day and they just set the scope for how you're gonna live your life that day. It was so nice starting my day with the framing of, oh yes, I am reminding myself I need to love others today. And so within the first five minutes of my day, I had already got rid of those intrusive thoughts that tell me to sleep in, procrastinate, that I'm not worthy of love, like all those intrusive thoughts that sort of creep in sometimes. And I was just setting the right mentality for my day. That was a huge change that I noticed. Because what better way to start your day than framing your mind around the important things in life? Love, kindness, charity, you name it. One thing that I also realized, and this was quite humbling, was that I would have a lot of meta-aware moments as I was reading about how distracted I am in reading. I was shocked how in the first few days of my reading, I would start at the top of the page and by the time I reached the middle of the page, my mind had started to think about other things. And then I'd get to the bottom of the page and kind of realize like, oh, I don't know what I just read. And then I would have a meta-aware moment of being like, Kristen, you're supposed to be focusing. All right, go back and read it again. Do not let yourself get distracted. A few times I was reading my book and then for some reason, something on the page would trigger a thought of a task I had to do. And so I would have this moment while reading like, oh, I shouldn't do the task now because I'm reading the book and I should be focusing on the book. But you know what? If I don't do it now, I'm not going to focus on the book. So I'm going to get up and do the task. And so I would put the book down, stand up and go and start to do the task. But then I would have a better aware moment and be like, no, Christian, you're doing the thing that you want yourself against in the last video. Sit down, read the book, keep your mind focused on these little things because you know that your attention span is not great as a result of all the binge watching you've been doing. Choose to focus. And I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with getting up and choosing to do tasks midway through reading. Maybe you'll come back to the book. Maybe your discipline is really good, but my discipline is not good. And I know because the times that I've tried to read in the past and I've got up mid reading to do a task, telling myself I will come back and read, I rarely come back and read. The times when I'm like, oh, I'm gonna say some prayers, say a rosary, journal, introspect. Anytime I say to myself, I won't do it now, I'm gonna do it later. 99% of the time, I forget to do it later. Something else comes up and I choose to do the other thing instead. So I think going forward from this challenge, I'm really going to be mindful of that and be like, if, if I think about doing reading or prayer or whatever it is, I'm going to choose to do it then. You can make that choice unless there's like a really important emergency that's on your hands. And look, I'm not saying don't get easy on yourself you know, making the transition from certain habits to like better habits. We have to go easy on ourselves. We have to extend grace to ourselves. You know, I wasn't too hard on myself. I kind of just laughed at myself. And again, not saying that in and of itself, doing tasks mid reading or not reading or whatever it is are bad. I'm not saying that. I'm saying we all, we all have different thresholds. We all know ourselves. We know when too much is too much. We know when it's not a big deal and we know when it is a big deal. And I'm just sharing the little epiphanies that I had that I thought were really interesting because all of these things kind of just proved to me that my attention span was not very high. And actually, I mean, I'm still at the point where like last night, for instance, I went to bed and I just read five or 10 minutes of this. I couldn't sit there and read for like hours and hours. Granted, the stuff in here is really quite spiritually heavy in that you just kind of need to read a few pages to set you on a really nice sort of introspective monologue and meditation about life and yourself and about God and all that. So they're not like fiction novels. I'm sure it'd be easier to read like a fiction novel. But for me, I'm still at the point where my attention span is not very high for this kind of thing. So I'm definitely going to take this forward and continue to do the reading before bed every night and do the prayer meditation every morning and night because I personally really enjoyed that. I thought it was really nice to again set my mind in that mentality for the start of the day and before I went to bed. Because again, like before you go to bed, it's just so nice. It's so nice going to bed and having a read of something that's so wholesome and setting your mind on beautiful things right before you go to bed. You just go to bed feeling more cozy and comfortable and protected and safe and there are less risks of nightmares. So on the things I noticed to do with this 
challenge. I noticed that I looked forward to bedtime every single night. When it came to bedtime, I was like, nice, I'm gonna get to do my reading. I'm gonna be thinking about important things. I'm gonna be challenging myself. Moving on, another thing that I noticed throughout the week on my notes here, I've written it, though I've already talked about it, was that my self-respect increased. Cannot emphasize this enough. I felt like superwoman. As a result of this, I just completed more little annoying tasks because I believed in myself. And it wasn't just in little annoying tasks and choosing to get up and do them, but it was in other things. That, that mentality started to bleed into other areas of my life, such as when I found myself being not so virtuous with my friends, I had a meta awareness moment and I was like, no, Kristen, you can choose to love them in this moment. And because I had been contemplating things of love every single night and every single morning, and I'd set my mind on that for the day, and I'd proven to myself that I could do the things that I promised myself, I then altered my behavior around the people in my life to love them better. So it was just, everything was just fantastic. I also, because of the gift of time and all the introspection that I did, I was able to sort of do this thing where I would reflect on my entire day right before I went to bed and I would kind of run myself through some of the interactions that I had and ask myself how could I be a, how could I have been more loving in that moment how wasn't I my best self today how was I my best self today what were the moments that I felt really proud of myself like I really loved myself like I really respected myself and then I would reflect on those how am I going to alter my behavior going forward so that's all the mental spiritual binge watching related side of things now to get to the physical side of things. So I did make myself a couple of physical promises, I guess, meaning I promised to drink five cups of water every day. I promised to make myself a green smoothie every morning. And I promised to do a 30 minute walk every day, which I changed to 30 minutes of exercise. Because prior to this challenge, I was doing a 30 minute walk most days. And I, I just decided to up the ante a little bit. So I changed it to a 15 minute workout routine in the morning and then a 15 minute or 30 minute walk afterwards. And guys, when I tell you that I feel 10 times better physically this week than I did last week, I am amazed at how just seven days of physical activity for 30 plus minutes, like proper physical activity that's a little bit challenging, not too challenging, but challenging enough for your level. I'm amazed at what it has done for my mind, for my body, for my being. <laughs> I feel more in tune with my body. My body feels lighter. I feel like I'm floating throughout my day. It feels like there's no heaviness in my body. And that's, you know, in conjunction with all of the mental and spiritual work that I've been doing as well. But you know, we are mind, body and spirit. So it makes sense that when all of those elements are healthy, you feel lighter in general. My body just felt healthier in general. Yeah, there was a little bit of pain from the muscle workout and stuff, but it was like a good pain. Like, you know, you're growing and developing and you know, the endorphins are pumping and then you get to work and your brain is more focused because you've got a good pump of endorphins for the day. And my sleep was so much better. There were two nights where I just slept completely through the night. I made sure that I was getting eight hours and I did not stir for two of those nights. That is huge for me. And the reason is I was just more tired when I went to bed because I was actually ticking boxes for every part of my life, spiritual, mental, and physical. Exercising for 30 plus minutes a day and exerting yourself a little bit means that you are generally going to be more tired your body has been used well throughout the day. The amount of times I would usually sleep for just four or five hours because I wasn't super tired when I went to bed because I would usually be sitting at a desk or like filming, which is sitting in front of a camera really. It was starting to become a bit of a problem in my life that I would never feel tired when I went to bed, but I felt tired every single time I went to bed this week. And it was such a nice feeling because it wasn't like overly tired. It was a healthy tired because I had fed my body with good healthy things throughout the day, water, vegetables, fruit, and I was getting to bed at a reasonable hour and I had use my body throughout the day. So I'm 100% going to be continuing doing little five to 10 minute workouts going forward. I even was waking up at 7.30 and doing a workout before eight. When I tell you that that is something I never thought I could do, <laughs> I was amazed. I am not a routine kind of person. Routine doesn't really do it for me, but I am absolutely gonna keep the morning workout routine in my schedule going forward. It was such a good feeling. So on top of that, I continued my promise to not listen to true crime. And to be honest, I'm going to keep that in my life going forward because true crime is not a good genre for me. I have decided in moderation, it's fine. Like my fiance and I watched the movie Nefarious, which even though it was fictional, felt like a true crime genre. And that, you know, sent my mind into contemplating some dark things. But at the, you know, that's okay in moderation. Again, you've got to know your threshold and what is and isn't too much for you. Also, it helped that Nefarious had that element of hope to it because it was religious subject matter. Another thing that I did was delete a social media app 
from my phone. I chose to delete Instagram. I did use it for my business and a couple of other things throughout the week, but the point was I deleted it from my homepage. So every time I found myself going on autopilot, shocked at how many times this happened, to the spot where my Instagram app had been and I, and I was clicking blank air, I was like, oh, Yes, that's right. Autopilot switch off, meta awareness comes in. That's right, I was meant to not use Instagram this week and then I would choose to do something else. And it was a really great little tactic that helped me get out of the habit of just clicking on Instagram whenever I was bored. And you know, today I went onto Instagram and I was like, I don't even have interest in scrolling or watching stories as much as I did seven days ago because I've experienced a different kind of life. I've experienced a different kind of dopamine over the last seven days. Okay, so that is my experience of the last seven days. I really feel like I learned a lot. I really feel like I grabbed the bull by the horns with it. It was so nice keeping myself accountable, knowing that I was gonna have to make this video and knowing that I had to set that example. But in the process, that motivation allowed me to realize that I have the power. I have the strength to be disciplined enough to just choose these things for myself. So many people in my life didn't even know I was doing this challenge. So it's not like other people were keeping me accountable. I was keeping myself accountable and I was choosing to do the things. And I just had so much more self-respect and I just felt better and it was fantastic. I even found myself doing little extra things, extra exercise, taking vitamins. I don't usually take vitamins, but I was like, maybe I'll crack a vitamin C today. It's the small things, okay? So out of everything I've talked about today, the things that I'm going to keep in my life going forward are the exercise. I just had way better sleeps. That in and of itself is a reason to keep the exercise in my life. I'm gonna keep the five cups of water every single day. I'm gonna try and make smoothies as often as possible. I'm gonna do less stream not sure if I'm gonna cut it out completely, but I'm confident that I will do less streaming because my quality of life was just so much better over the last seven days and less Instagram as well. I'm also gonna keep the reflection every single night and every single morning because that made probably, I was gonna say it, it made the biggest difference, but I think the biggest difference was the exercise and the water and the smoothie. Like the physical health made the biggest difference, but I think mentally the biggest difference was doing the reading and reflection every night and every morning. It really just set my mind in a good place for the day. And I don't wanna eliminate that, especially because I haven't finished these books yet. So thank you so much for watching guys. I'm so happy that I could do this challenge with you. Please let me know in the comments, how did it go for you? I understand that it was challenging. I understand our life circumstances are all different. I understand it might not have been possible for you to stick to your promises. As I said, I altered the promises here and there. I did watch a bit of Friends. I did stream some podcasts as I was walking. So look, no judgment if you didn't stick to your promises. The goal of this challenge was to just implement some changes in your life over the seven days, whatever that looked like for you, to sort of just encourage you to not only practice healthier habits, but to realize the power that you have in just shifting your mentality and choosing to do the thing you made a promise to yourself you would do. And it makes a big difference. I just wanted to give you the tools to be able to practice that so that you would have these realizations that you have this power and it's amazing. The human mind is incredibly powerful. Anyway, so I won't take up more of your time, but please, please, please let me know in the comments how you went. And I don't know, maybe I'll do more challenges like this in the future. Thank you so much for watching guys. Until next time, bye.